Hey everybody, Nana Reef Freak here. Today we're going to take a trip down memory lane. This aquarium you're looking at is a clip from 2022, back when I first got my Fluval Evo 13.5 gallon. So back in 2022, I did things a little differently. I didn't have quite as much knowledge as I have today, so there are a couple things in this video that I wouldn't recommend today, such as doing a fish in cycle. Nowadays, I would recommend waiting at least a month before you put your fish in your aquarium, even if you have cycled bacteria or cycled filter media, or if you're using a bottle like Quick Start, I'd still advise you wait that month long process. In this video, we're also gonna talk about this tank and what I started it with, basically all the stuff that it came with. And then we're gonna jump to 2025, which is three years later, and talk about everything that has happened since and how the tank is looking after three years have passed. Twenty twenty five Nana Reef Freak here. So right now this tank is the very first month that it was set up. We do have a pygmy angelfish in here and a pink skunk clown. Again, not ideal stocking, not something I'd recommend today. The plan here was we were gonna set up a fifty five gallon, and we did set up a fifty five gallon. The problem is the pygmy angelfish did not survive the transition to the fifty five gallon. That meant that the fifty five gallon became a damsel tank. So we ended up getting damsels and Clarky clownfish, and then we ultimately ended up trading in our orange skunk clownfish to the local fish store and uh, putting the Clarky clownfish in the Marineland 25 gallon that we posted about uh, back on Monday. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But yeah, so the pink skunk clown is fine here. The pygmy angelfish, not so much. The pygmy angelfish really needs probably a 40 to 50 gallon tank. And in this video, my 2022 self does acknowledge that and does mention that we're gonna set up that 55. We're also, you know, looking here, it looks like we got some utter chaos zoas, which I still have today. That Duncan in the back has gotten huge today, so you'll see that later on in the video. And unfortunately, these Palithoa did melt, so if you guys have any tips for Palithoa, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to get some tips on, on how to care for that coral. This Recordia also dis disappeared after some time, uh, and those Zoas here took over these rocks in this tank, unfortunately. So we'll take a look at that uh, in the next clip. All right, this is one month later. This is October, and my 2022 self is going to be talking about the tank in 2022. I decided to just start a whole new tank. We're doing a fish in cycle here, which is not something I usually recommend or do or try. So I've essentially taken this tank and taken some of the media from the 10 gallon, put it in the here, and then I've taken live rock and put it in the here. Now you'll see two rocks in the main section here. The purple rock in the center is a man-made life saver rock from Carib Sea. The rock in the back is a well-established piece of live rock that I've had on hand. So putting that in there has really helped kind of jumpstart this tank cycle. We've also got some sand on the bottom. It is oolite sand. It is oolite reef sand. It is a crushed aragonite sand. So essentially just a sand made of aragonite, which is really nice. So having the live rock in there and having the established media from the 10 gallon basically made this tank to where it was pretty much already cycled. I've been testing it every single day. So I've got a Red Sea ammonia test kit. I also have the Seachem alert tag, as you can see floating in there. The Seachem alert tag, I don't know if it's very uh, responsive, I guess is the word. So it's accurate. Every time I've tested, the, the most ammonia I've had in this tank uh, since testing has been about 0.02. So hardly anything, uh, just, just enough for the Red Sea test to pick up really. And the Seachem tag here, the ammonia alert tag, has basically just read zero the entire time. I think the tag will start picking up if it reached like 0.05, for example, where it's more of a deadly ammonia. Uh, and also, I just turned these lights on about 30 minutes ago, so the corals have not fully opened up quite, quite just yet. Yeah, so that's kind of how the tank has been going now. What I've been doing is I also added a bottle of live bacteria to this tank. I used a bottle of... Uh, Marine Colony by uh, ATM, which you can get on Amazon if you want. So I used a 20 gallon bottle. This is a 13 gallon tank. I figured to just overdo it, we'd be better than not overdoing it. I've also been doing water changes about every three days. And when I say water changes, I mean like one, two gallons at most. I basically just take it down this little like grid here and then fill it back up. So I've just been doing that every two or three days just to kind of keep the ammonia under wraps and essentially let the tank cycle slowly so the ammonia builds up a little bit, do a little water change, builds up a little bit, do a little water change. So where I actually learned this strategy was another YouTuber. Uh, if you guys have heard of MD Fish, he is a freshwater guy. He uh, basically does fishing cycles for all of his tanks and he just uses some quick start bacteria and he will do a like one or two gallon water change on every like 10 or 20 gallons of tank size. 
and he'll do it every day. Uh, and he has like an RODI like in his house where it's on a faucet and he can just basically pipe it right into the tanks. Um, and on fresh water, I think it works a little better than salt water, obviously. Here, I think it's mostly working because I just have the established media rock and then the, of course, the liquid bacteria that I put in there. Um, but yeah, the, the live uh, rock and the active media that I had from out there tank are really helping here. So, and in that way, the fish never get much more ammonia than 0.02 there. So uh, the other things I've been doing is when I do a water change, I use Seacomb Safe on the water and then I use API Quick Start. So the Quick Start, I just throw a shot of that in there just to make sure the water I'm putting back in there has some live bacteria in it too. So to kind of recap the first two weeks of this tank, we had sand that was not live from Oolite. We had a giant live rock in the back there and then a big uh, lifesaver rock in the center there. And the live rock obviously has bacteria on it. We had a whole bottle of ATM colony for a 20 gallon reef tank. And then every time we do a little one or two gallon water change, we have a shot of quick start about every three or four days. So this is my green leather coral here. If you guys have been watching the channel for a long time, I've had this green leather coral probably a good 12 years now. Um, when I got it, it started out like the size of a quarter and I've just grown it ever since then. And it's getting pretty big now. Um, at one point it did split off two little babies, uh, two little baby leather corals. They were put on frag plugs. I did move. Uh, I, I moved from my old house to my new one. And unfortunately the two little uh, leather corals came off the frag plug and went somewhere in my old tank and I just never found them. Uh, and then let's take a look at my other corals here. So right here, I have an utter chaos zoanthid. There is my star polyp. And then up here, I have some uh, little Florida recordias. The Duncan start in the open. We got a Duncan coral back there. We got uh, just some just some base zoanthids here, just like yellowish, greenish ones. Those are kind of like the ones that grow all over the tank. My plan is to put them on this little rock here and just let them take it over. And then these zoids here, these that are chaos, I kind of want to put on the main rock and just let them take over this whole lifesaver rock there. And then this here is a, a Grand Palithoa, a Cinnamon Grand Palithoa. So this guy, uh, when I first got him, he was not opening for the first probably four days. Um, I was a little worried about him. I've never had success with Palithoa. They've always died on me. And when I say died, they like melt away over the course of like four or five months. I think in the past it was just too much lighting. Yeah, these guys are probably one of my favorite corals, uh, which is just kind of funny because they're so plain. I just like how big they are, how different. It, something, something about them brings me in because I've never had luck keeping them. So I'm just really glad that they're doing well in this tank. Uh, and to, to talk about the tank a little more as well, this is the, so, but yeah, super great tank guys. Uh, highly would recommend Petco was having a sale on this. So I paid uh, 159, I think, or 149. Pretty awesome little aquarium. Uh, again, these are the fish. So we got the pygmy angel popsicle. Pretty cool. He's pecking at the rocks, doing his thing. And we got the pink skunk clown blush. We'll add another one eventually. All right, 2025 Reef Freak back here again. Now we're looking at some clips of the tank a couple months later. You can see we've got some Bam Bam Zoas up there by the uh, green star polyps. You can see that we got an anemone front and center. This is a rose bubble tip. This is actually the same rose bubble tip that's in my Marine Land 25 gallon that the Clarkies are now enjoying. So the 13.5 gallon actually got a much larger anemone recently that you guys will see here in a little bit. Here we're showing that we moved the leather coral. It's got a little bit better flow in the corner. And here's one thing that I didn't realize was gonna be a problem. We got that live rock and we got this crab and this is a molt of that crab and that crab turned into a like a boxer crab or a stone crab or something and became a huge problem. We eventually had to get rid of it. We've also got this adorable, uh, you know, scarlet hermit crab here that actually climbed into a shell that was glued to a frag of my leather coral. And then here again, the clownfish, and there's that uh, pygmy angelfish still doing great. This pygmy angelfish actually lived in here for a whole year uh, before we set up the 55, and then we cycled the 55 for like six months. So the pygmy angel was in here like a year and six months in. And then uh, unfortunately, right around the time we were literally thinking about moving the pygmy angelfish, like the week after you know we were gonna like move her she unfortunately did not make it so i would not recommend that i probably will never try one of these fish unless i get a uh, much larger tank in the future but you live and you learn so you know i know a couple people are probably going to give you some thumbs down for that but uh, no one's perfect and uh yeah without that experience you know how, how am i supposed to know but anyways um you know so far, uh, the tank is doing really good at this stage. The, uh, again, the, the Recordia didn't make it and the Palithoa didn't make it, but the uh, Duncans, the Leather, the Zoas all did exceptionally well. 
and this clownfish uh, actually ended up sleeping on this back wall, with, uh, with, which is just so funny. So now we're going to jump into 2025. So these next clips you're going to see are the tank today. So here's that bigger rose bubble tip anemone that I was talking about earlier. It's actually a rainbow bubble tip anemone, so all that means is that it's got some green coloration in the center of it, if you could actually see the mouth of the anemone. It's so big that when it's in between these two rocks, which is where it decided to settle, that it squishes all up so the tentacles look awesome like this. Uh, but you can't see the center of the anemone. But yeah, I actually got this from a, a local reefer. And here's that uh, Kenny Cane Coral in the front. So we just transitioned to that with the focus there. And Kenny Cane Coral is one I've always had trouble keeping, but here we're doing a great job with it finally, which is great. Uh, and then we have Hammer Coral. So this is a gold hammer. I know it doesn't look the best under the lights in the Fluval Evo, but... Uh, eventually that will change. We are in the process of setting up a Nuvo Fusion Lagoon 25, so all these corals will eventually go into there for growing out, and they'll really start to color up under there because we've got some Kessels for that, and we're also going to go and add some of the AI blades to that system. And here's that Duncan Coral. This thing is amazing. It started off as that one head, and now it's got, gosh, probably 12 heads on there. It's like the size of a baseball. Uh, it's hard to tell in this photo, but each of those heads is absolutely massive. Uh, and the mushrooms next to it are orange recordias, and they're doing great. So here's a better shot of the whole tank. That little caddy in the top right, the little floating like fish house uh, up there, that is holding a tiny, 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 tiny bubble tip anemone that split off from one of my other anemones in my 25-gallon uh, quite a quite a while back. And uh, we're trying to grow that bad boy up, but he's so little that he honestly just gets lost in the aquarium, so that's why he's in there. Here you can see me feeding the fish. We've been trying to get this clown goby to eat. This is one of the newest inhabitants of this 13 gallon tank and he is the most stubborn. He's just on hunger strike. I've been trying to feed him cyclopes, mice shrimp, flakes, pellets. We're garlic soaking his food for three to five minutes. You can see I'm overfeeding so he gets a ton of access to the food. I mean, literally, how could you not eat that? My guy, come on. Uh, and I've literally even tried baby brine shrimp and he's still stubborn. We'll see uh, how he makes out, but here is our uh, emerald crab. This is just in there to eat the bubble algae and, you know, kind of clean up the tank a little bit. But I just thought it was kind of cool. He came out to the front of the tank, so we got a little clip of him. But here's the whole tank uh, straight on. You can see everything in the tank here. You can see our little frag racks. Got some zoas, the candy cane, the hammer coral, the mushrooms at the bottom. We've even got some discozoma mushrooms in the back, I think they're called. We've got some utter chaos in the bottom right. We've got a bunch of those uh, zoas that I said I was going to put on the smaller rock that have taken over the bigger rock. There's hermit crabs climbing, you know, Mount Everest in the background. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and there's that clown goby again in the top left. But the clown goby, he's eating just enough to survive, but I really hope he starts to take off and eat a lot. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap up here with just a quick word from me uh, back in 2022 talking about how to start a tank and, you know, my best advice for that. Thank you all so much for watching, and please leave a like and subscribe on the video if you could. That really inspires me to make more of these videos, and you know, it really helps a lot to see your thumbs up. We're trying to get to 3,000 subs, so if you guys don't mind, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. Have a good one, everybody. If you guys set this up yourself, you know, caution uh, to the wise. I, I know established reef keepers, people that have been in the hobby for a long time, are going to know not to do a fish-in cycle unless they're experienced with it and they've done it before. Uh, in this case, you know, if you have established media, established sand, established live rock, you can basically just dump that into a new tank, new tank, it'll do a mini cycle and you're good. For a brand new hobbyist, I wouldn't recommend this. If if I were you guys and you know you're watching these videos and you have no idea how to do a reef tank, uh, basically what I'd recommend, go get some dry sand, go get some dry rock, or you know, get some lifesaver rock by Carib Sea if you like that purple look uh, like I got in there. And then go grab a bottle of live bacteria, dump it in there, and just uh, throw some like fish food in there, like three or four pellets, just a little bit, and just let that sit for a month. Let it sit for a month, test every, at least every week, like test your water maybe every five to seven days for the first month. And what you'll see is you'll see the ammonia goes up after the first probably week. Um, about a week later, you'll see your nitrite spike. And then in the last two weeks, you'll see your nitrite turn into nitrate. And by that point, you'll have zero ammonia and your tank will be pretty much cycled. 